G'day folks, welcome to a nice little summer's evening update. Um, just sort of chilling out here and taking it easy. Um, basically I've spent a day working with Julian or at Julian's work, doing some factory relocation and uh, uh, let's just say my rib injury is not healed as well as I thought it would and uh, throwing big tool cabinets and stuff around is kind of bugging me again. Not horribly, I'm going to go back tomorrow, but I've just got to be very careful about what I'm doing. It is persistent, like the doctor said. Like she said, it could be six months, and uh, it's only been about two or three. So, yeah, I've got to be very careful with this, which is unfortunate, but that's just how it goes. I'm just uh, sitting here chilling, having a nice coke, cold Coca-Cola, and uh, enjoying the summer's afternoon. I also got a uh, little uh, toy that I'm going to show you. My new baby my little work work commute car um, yeah apart from that I've got a few little projects on the go uh, still haven't gotten around to cleaning up in here which is nothing new uh, nothing new or unusual I should basically not bother reporting on that <laughs> there's no point mentioning that because you know it's never going to change one thing I do need to do before I finish my holidays is um, get that installed at mum's place I am still on holiday I've just been doing a bit of factory relocation work for uh, Julian's current work. Well, I've done one day and almost broke myself, but I'll be going back tomorrow and the next day, hopefully, and probably have Friday off to catch up and maybe have a big clean up in here and a clean up outside, and then just go straight back into my current previous job for the next couple of months. And then we'll make a decision whether I move over to his work or to um, the local injection or extrusion molding and CNC machine shop. Both of them are great options. They both have very good learning experiences. Uh, the one Julian works for is, well, I can't talk much about it. I'm um, basically, A, I don't talk about my jobs much in my videos anyway, but B, a lot of it's under NDA, non-disclosure agreement. <coughs> and it's to do with um, police and emergency service work and that sort of stuff so it's very high security basically if it's not on the website you basically don't talk about it so yeah it's one of those things but it's going to be very fascinating like I'd love to get in these guys but it's just the commute time is basically from my place down on the peninsula all the way to the almost the other well, basically the other side of the of Melbourne city so it's like two hours in peak traffic each way that's a hell of a drive but hey like I said I got a nice car that does it with ease. It's a great car to drive for the city city commute. Not a sports car, but still, I was able to beat and out, out accelerate a Ford Territory numerous times on the way out today. Um, yeah, unfortunately, got as far as Julian's place and waited for him, and I was getting this pain. Just kept getting worse. I'm on anti-inflammatories and shit now, but yeah, I can't operate machinery or do anything like that. Ugh. By the time you had a couple of Panadol and a couple of anti-inflammatories, you kind of feel a little bit high, even though they're not supposed to. I just seem to be having a bit of a reaction to them. Um, anyway, I'll get round to sorting this junk out one day, and uh, yeah, let's have a look at my new new, new baby, my new toy. Mm. Yep, this is Kate. Her name, well, her name is Kate. She is a 2015 IX35 uh, base package with a few options like darker tint and all that sort of stuff, paint protection. Very nice car. Very dirty already. <laughs> but yes, very nice to drive. Very well made. I mean, I know some people hate Hyundai. I used to hate them. But I can tell you now, I've driven the newer RAV4s and things like that, and I'm more impressed with this than I was with the new Toyota RAV4. I've got no interest in buying a new RAV4. They have more, more issues than these iXs do. And to be frank, I think these look better. A lot better. Need a tow bar. That's on the uh, to buy list need alloys. I'll keep an eye on uh, Gumtree to replace the uh, replace the steels with some uh, SE or Elite alloys. But in time. 
the tyres still have 20,000 on them and I don't, I don't need different size tyres for the alloys but still I'll run the tyres out and then take the whole lot off and swap them out for new alloys and tyres when they're done. Um, no, no hole in the roof, we don't need a hole in the roof. Basic, there's no GPS antenna, no GPS system. The next step up was uh, like another $10,000. Uh, that was a diesel one though, which would have been nice, but still a 2 litre um, GDI engine, gasoline direct injection. As I said before, I had no problem beating numerous hatchbacks and even a 4 litre 6 cylinder Ford Territory off the mark every time. Just for a 2 litre engine, 2 litre 4 cylinder, this thing has ridiculous acceleration. They're just, they're good. The seats are good. Uh, out of all the cars I test drove, and trust me, I test drove quite a lot, I picked this one for a good reason. Excellent aircon. Simple head unit to use. Uh, I don't have my phone on me at the moment, but it'll sync straight to my phone. It's got the Bluetooth controls. Uh, really straightforward. Aircon's excellent. Steering is very nice, very adaptive. It's a 32-bit processor. They've upgraded. They've upgraded the Series 2. This is a Series 2, 2015. Uh, low case. It's not brand new. I wasn't going to buy brand new. They've upgraded the steering rate by 20. Oh, sorry, the, the suspension rate by 28%. So it's just far more better mannered over the rough roads we have around here. Uh, the Series 1 I never drove long enough to really love or hate but this one just handles our roads perfectly. The Hyundai Australia really listened to people when they were saying look they, they're too easily upset by our bumpy roads and they put the suspension rate up by 28% yeah, and made a much better car. Likewise the power steering it's servo electric they've upgraded the processor from a 16-bit processor to 32. I'm not sure if that's why whether or not that's because they couldn't get the 16-bit ones anymore or because they um, they want the servo drive to perform better. Who knows? Either way, the steering is positive, it's not super light, it's not heavy, it just, it works. It's a modern car. Love them or hate them, modern cars are here to stay and they actually do a pretty good job. A lot of black in the interior, it's the only thing I'm a bit iffy about, but again, some companies are starting to come out with wood grain inlays for the dash and the doors. That's something I'll look into probably next end of the year or something like that when I've got a bit of cash saved up. I'm paying this off on finance, so it's not a, uh, it's not ideal. But again, I didn't have 24 grand to just go out and throw on a car. But yeah, she's a lovely little thing. Simple. None of the extra bullshit like the electric remote opening trunk or the um, massive um, nav system head unit. I mean, nav would be really handy, but I can do that with a phone or a, um, a nav man or something like that anyway. So, yeah, this is my new little work toy. I know Bluey Rab's going to feel a little bit left out, but I've driven Bluey across the city before and it takes it out of you. <laughs> it's like going from driving a truck to driving a sports car from this one. Or even not even a sports car. This is easy to, easier to drive than a sports car. It's just a big hatchback. The iX35 is a big hatchback. Uh, this one's two-wheel drive. The base models are all two-wheel drive. I wasn't fussed about all-wheel drive because A, it's just a commuter and B, two-wheel drive just uses more fuel. Sorry, A, all-wheel drive uses more fuel. Eh, I can't fault it. I really can't. Just about hit uh, 27,000 Ks. I've already put nearly, oh, I've put about 500 on her in the past, uh, just under a week of driving. I basically picked her up, when did I pick her up? Just after... Yeah, day after Boxing Day, I picked her up. So, yeah. Apart from a lot of black and really, there's not a lot to say bad about them. They're a good tight car. No cabin rattles or any nastiness like that. Very well mounted. The only rattles I can hear are just loose bits floating around like the e-tags and things. There's uh, nothing, to, nothing to really gripe about. That'd be part of the rattle too, one of Julian's Nerf guns. <laughs> 
you've got to have a Nerf gun handy when you're going to work for those guys. If the CEO gets bored, he has a habit of shooting people with a Nerf gun or just starting a Nerf war. That's the kind of company I can get used to working for. Uh, Lock-up glove box. Um, I've already tested that one. <laughs> Holds about three, four cartons of 12 gauge shells and a few cartons of 308. Obviously got a transport ammo locked up so I just pull all that out and basically the day I brought the car home I went straight by the gun shop and spent a bit of money so we could go shooting over the holidays but um, the guys I go shooting with just haven't had time and haven't found a, a range that's uh, viable yet so yeah I think you can fit about, mm, I've got four cartons of 12 gauge in there and a couple of cartons of um, 308 and a couple of cartons of 22 and it was able to close properly and lock so that's my approval for the glove box. <laughs> Um, iPod auxiliary USB input down there, or USB, um, you can put a USB stick with your MP3s on it. Oh, I don't have a lot of light in here, but yeah, she's a happy little car. Click click of a million different relays and solenoids. Yeah, anyway. I'll definitely take, have to take her for a long trip up to the uh, up to the ranges when I do go shooting though. As much as I love driving Bluey, I think this one needs to uh, take this one through the windies because uh, they handle a lot better than you'd think. Like you can throw them through the roundabout and they handle pretty flat. They're not perfect, they still weigh one and a half ton, but they actually handle really good. It's certainly a lot better than the Series 1. Series 2 is definitely worth the extra money because I found Series 1s with low Ks for only a few grand less than what I paid for this one. So I was, I was so keen on getting a Series 1, uh, probably a slightly up, up spec, like an Elite spec, for 20, 20 to 22 grand. And then I realised a base model Series 1 has a lot of the stuff the Elite comes with because they decided to add it on afterwards, like your roof rails and all that stuff. That came with them uh, on Series 2. And they perform better, they have a better engine, they have better suspension and everything. And it's only like $2,000 more. Really? <laughs> These just hold their value. From 2011 to 2015, the value is pretty much flat, unless you find one with really high Ks, or it's a private seller and they're really, really desperate to get rid of it. That's when you'll get a bargain but you've still generally got to put it through roadworthy yourself. You won't get your full factory warranty. I've got nine years roadside assist, which I'll probably never use. I want to sell, I want to trade up in about three years time to a new Tucson um, and still got the balance of the five, five year um, new car warranty. So yeah, can't lose. So anyway, that is Kate, my brand new, well, not brand new, but near new little uh, commuter pet. Needs a good clean and yeah. Oh, I figured I'd better show you in the rear and under the hood. Can't not do that. Uh, got some uh, window socks, little blinds. Full size spare. Has been used but well I think that's one that came off the car, it's been repaired, but you can almost see the little hairy nubs on it, so it's basically brand new. Yeah, still holding air. <laughs> I guess they had a puncture probably less than a thousand k's after they bought the car. It kind of sucks. But that's the kind of luck I'd have too. <laughs> um, yeah. I've done the TV test. Uh, those of you who follow me on Google would have seen I had... Uh, that 50 inch plasma there's no way you can fit that in there even with the base off the TV is actually taller from there to the floor so you've got to lay them down but that's what Bluey's for Bluey Rav can hold, handle about six of those things standing on their bases side by side so yeah certainly not the biggest cargo area but it'll do Yeah, fairly simple, two litre four cylinder, this comes, this comes off, uh, gasoline direct injection. Uh, 
it's in direct, direct injection pump. The injectors are under the down there under the inlet. <coughs> Very simple solid state coil and plug ignition. Alternators up nice and high. You've basically got alternator, water pump, aircon compressor, and crankshaft. That's it. No hydraulic power steering pump because it's all servo electric, which is down there, or at least probably that module there. Uh, no, that's part of the body. Oh, and no, it'll be in the rack. There's a yeah. There's still a rack there. It's either under the dash or it's in the rack. ABS and traction control, stability control, all the new, new, new abbreviations that they ha make, make you have. Very common markings, Hyundai and Kia. These are all made by basically the same manufacturer. You'll see the same, probably the same parts on a Kia Sportage, like the one from across the road. Same, same age as this, it'd probably have very similar components, if not the same engine. Um, AC works for a treat. Interesting that they uh, give the liquid line a bit more cooling by passing it physically through the inside of the return line then back out again. I've seen that on some air conditioners and stuff like that. It's a really smart idea. Um, really not much else. Fly-by-wire throttle body, single piece, no more cables, no more bullshit. It's just one mechanical servo unit tied to the cruise control and everything. Lots of space. A lot of that's to do with crash safety. These have a um, five star safety rating here. Six airbags. There's the PCM, ECM. Again, as much as I'd love to open these modules up and show you what's inside, I'm under full factory warranty, so I can't. I can't even find out what kind of new 32-bit processor the power steering uses. It's a bit of a shame. <laughs> I am curious, but I'm not going to risk avoiding my warranty. Yeah, so I don't intend on keeping the car long enough that I have to do any serious work myself, but if I did, it actually looks really serviceable. It's uh, chain, chain timing, no belt, continuously variable valve timing. Um, that's about it. They're quite straightforward. They're still, at the end of the day, still a standard internal combustion engine with double overhead cams, VVT, and... Yeah, electronic throttle, that's about it. Anyway, that should do. Thanks for watching.